Hi, I'm Larry Troca, and I'm here today to do a video on choosing the right saddle, and more specifically, what to look for in a reining saddle and what to look for in a cutting saddle. You know, the big problem with uh, choosing a saddle, trying to find a, a good saddle, is finding a saddle that will help your riding instead of hinder your riding. We also need a saddle uh, that is comfortable for our horse, that's a good fit for our horse. But the biggest thing is, you know, finding a saddle that allows you to ride in balance, uh, time your horse, and sit that big stop. You know, I've given a jillion uh, reining and cutting lessons over the years and, and a lot of clinics, and, you know, it's just one of the most common problems is finding a good, a good saddle uh, that allows the rider to do his best. You know, a good example is, uh, you know, I had a lady come, come take a lesson one time. She had just bought a new reining horse. She wanted to learn how to do reining. And um, so she, she brought the horse over, and, um, you know, the lesson just wasn't going good. You know, she had a hard time staying in balance when she was loping her horse. She had a hard time, you know, timing that horse uh, for the maneuvers. And there was no way she could sit the big stop. Uh, you know, she was stiffening up a lot. She was falling forward. Uh, you know, it just wasn't going well. And, you know, I just told her, you know, hey, don't worry about it. You know, it'll take time. And she was fine with that. Um, but she asked me if I would work her horse for her so she could kind of watch. And I'll tell you, when I went to get on the horse, as soon as my butt settled in that saddle, I mean, I immediately knew what the problem was. I mean, that saddle made it almost impossible to ride well. You know, e even I couldn't lope the horse in balance and time him right. And I couldn't sit uh, that, that big stop in that saddle. And I told the lady, I said, you know, uh, uh, your biggest problem isn't you, it's this saddle uh, that you've bought. And of course, she didn't want to hear it because she just bought that thing uh, the same time she bought the new horse, you know, she, and here I am telling her she's got to get rid of it and get a, a different saddle. Uh, but you know, it's a, it's a common thing. I'd say probably 90% of the, of the uh, riders that I see are riding a saddle that helps, that hurts them more than helps them. So in this video, I want to go over the characteristics of what makes a saddle good versus what makes a saddle bad, okay? So here we've got, you know, two saddles. We've got a reining saddle and we've got a cutting saddle. And on both saddles, for each discipline, there's three main factors that dictate whether it's, it's gonna help you or hurt you, whether it's a good saddle or a bad saddle. And those three factors are the seat, the hang of the stirrup leathers and the fit of the tree, or the design of the tree. We'll start with the reining saddle first, and we'll begin with the design of the seat. Now, the most important thing, or one of the most important things, is the seat needs to be close to the horse. You know, so many saddles, so many saddles that aren't designed right, the seat is too far up off the horse's back. And you need to be down on the horse's back, close to the horse so you can feel that horse. And being close to the horse's back is what stabilizes your center of gravity, okay? It makes you way more stable if you're sitting close to your horse. The pocket of the seat, which is the lowest part of the seat, needs to be two thirds of the way back, you know, toward the middle of the seat. If that pocket the lowest part of the seat is way back against the cantle, it's going to put your butt against that cantle, and it's going to cause the back of that saddle to throw you out of balance, okay? It's going to make it really hard to stay in balance with that horse. Uh, same token with if the, if the pocket is too far forward, it's going to make you ride right on top of the swells, you know, which isn't as bad as riding back on the cantle, but it's not ideal. Ideally, you, that pocket, the lowest part of the seat, needs to be about two-thirds of the way back, right about where my hand is. And I think the camera can pick it up. That it's pretty obvious that's where the pocket is on this saddle. We've got a little bit of buildup here in front of the cantle. We've got a little bit of buildup right behind the swells. Now, on this reining saddle, we'll also have some padding and some buildup up on the swells, which kind of stabilizes the rider 
for those really rapid spins. You know, a, a reining saddle, you don't need to move in that seat as much as you need to on a cutting saddle. So this, this uh, padding up front here is a good stabilizer and will really make you feel secure doing the reining maneuvers. So I really like that. The cantle is fairly low and it's at an angle uh, that, that allows you to be unrestricted. When we're riding a reining horse, riding that big stop, we need to have our, our, our pelvis underneath of us and we need to ride on the cheeks of our butt with our lower back rounded. I'll, I'll, I'll show you here on, this, on the stand here. So when we're riding our reining horse, we want to be on the cheeks of our butt versus riding on our thighs with our back arched, okay? You see, so many people arch their back, they have their butt out behind them, and they're riding on their thighs. And that is the best way I know to lose your balance in a reining maneuver, okay? You wanna be on the cheeks of your butt, lower back slightly rounded and relaxed, shoulders directly over your hips, legs totally relaxed, okay? And in this position, you can sit that stop. You can, you can rotate back on the cheeks of your butt a little bit more if you need to and really sit that stop and stay in balance. Now, if the cantle is too steep or the cantle is too high, when you go to sit that stop, that cantle is going to interfere with your back if it's not designed like this. So it's pretty critical that you've got that, saddle, that cantle low and at a good angle. The second major factor is the hang of the stirrup leathers. Now, on a, on a reining saddle or a cutting saddle, the stirrup leathers need to be hung far forward, way farther forward than what you're going to find in a roping saddle or a trail riding saddle. Um, if your feet go behind you on that big stop or on that spin, you're going to lose your balance. You're going to fall forward. You're going to lose your balance. It's critical that your feet stay are a little bit ahead of you to allow you to sit on the cheeks of your butt without effort, okay? A lot of people think that, oh, you know, it doesn't matter where the stirrup leathers hang. As long as they're sw free swinging, I can put my feet wherever I want. No, that's, uh, that's a misconception. If you have to think about it, if you have to physically move your feet forward and hold them up there, uh, even though you can because your stirrups swing freely, you're not going to be able to ride your horse right. I mean, it's as simple as that. Those stirrup leathers need to be hung far, far forward so that when you're totally relaxed, you're just automatically in the right position. I mean, that is so critical. Um, now, the third factor that a lot of people, you know, don't think about or they haven't heard about is the leg path. And by leg path, I mean the path that your leg takes from the seat to the stirrup leathers. And this saddle here has a nice groove, a nice indentation, the leg path that takes your leg comfortably right to the stirrup leather. Without that, you don't feel secure, you don't feel stable. Uh, or comfortable. Whenever you sit in a saddle and you go, oh boy, this is a nice comfortable saddle, nine times out of ten, that's a saddle with a really good leg path that, that, that allows you to sit comfortably. Now, let's talk about the distinction, um, the, the specific characteristics that make a reining saddle uh, good for a reining competition. On a reining saddle, we need to have our rein hand unrestricted, which means the swells need to be low. This saddle um, has between a seven and eight inch high swell. The horn needs to be low. This is a two inch horn. I wouldn't want a horn any taller than that. And it's a nice shaped horn. I mean, if I had to get a hold of it, you can get a hold of it. But basically you want low swells and a low horn on a reining saddle. 